15 Fascinating Things You Never Knew About the Queen's Guard Robots in human flesh, statues, lizard people with an unnatural skill for staying still. Experimental creatures created in secret labs to surveil the people and gather intel. These are some of the crazy conspiracy theories about Britain's iconic Royal Guard, a guard that has thousands of people waiting expectantly to uncover whether they're truly human. The Royal Guards are highly commended for strictly following protocol, despite attempts from citizens and tourists to make them break their statue-like decorum. Number 1. The guns are mostly for display. Never to be caught unarmed, the Queen's Guard is always seen wielding the standard bullpup assault rifle light support L86 LSW carbine L22, which is held on the shoulder. Fixed with design to kill bayonets at the tip, these guns are designed to be as intimidating as possible. Rightfully so, as they're mostly unloaded. Yes, as surprising as it may be, those scary-looking assault rifles are entirely void of bullets. There are many reasons for this, but the most likely is to prevent accidental fire at a civilian or someone of high importance. Despite the guns being unloaded, the mounted bayonets can do severe body damage at close range. Most retired Queen's Guard officials have even admitted that they had completely unloaded weapons during most of their shifts. The only exception being when they had reason to believe there could be an attack on a person of high interest. Only under these circumstances were the guards issued live weapons and placed on high alert for potential assassins and possible threats to the Queen and the royal family. Keep in mind that while the Queen's Guard may be content with their unloaded weapons, the Royal Protection Guards RPGs, do not follow the same rules that make the Queen's Guard statue-like in nature, and the RPGs will use their weapons if necessary. Number 2. They follow an extremely strict set of rules. Some things may not necessarily cause harm to the human body, but they can be very irritable and annoying. For example, think of a slow and steady trickle of sweat rolling down your face. The mysterious itch you get when you haven't moved for a while, slight cramps in your legs from standing all day, and so on. For normal humans, these are easily solved with a swipe, tap, scratch, or movement. But for the robot-like officers of the Queen's Guard, these sensations are a simulation of hell on Earth. Without being able to move or interact with passersby, they must endure all sorts of uncomfortable sensations, taunts, and quite frankly, the invasion of personal space that occurs when passersby stop to take pictures, crack jokes, and perform a list of other actions, all in a bid to get a reaction from them. They may tolerate actions like taking pictures of and with them so long as you do not get too close or make physical contact. If you wanted to play the role of a good Samaritan, you could think of little entertaining things to do that might make their shift fun. Number 3. The hats have a unique history. The 18-inch tall hats belonging to the Queen's Guard are sort of a national treasure, dating back to the Napoleonic Wars of 1815, where the British infantry, made up exclusively of the Queen's Guard, defeated the invading French army in the Battle of Waterloo. At this time, Napoleon's French army wore 18-inch black hats to appear taller and therefore seemed more intimidating than they were. With the British Empire's overwhelming victory, the surviving French soldiers hastily retreated, yelling, La Garde recule, which was an order to retreat, and threw their heavy hats off their heads in the process. The British soldiers collected the 18-inch French hats as trophies to symbolize their triumph, and they've worn them up until this day in ceremonial gatherings to honor their victory. As you can tell, the Queen's Guard are still proud of defeating France in the Napoleonic Wars, and this is evidenced by the way in which they proudly display their 18-inch hats. Number 4. The hats came at the price of bears. The 18-inch black fur hats are made of high-quality fur, which comes from bears. Contrary to what we may like to believe, the French used bearskin and bear fur in making their 18-inch black hats. Continuing the practice has become a tradition since the British claimed ownership of the hats. Fortunately, these hats are not easily damaged, as most are still functional despite being made in the early 1900s. Synthetic methods have been tried and tested to replicate the fur of the hats for more humane reasons, but sadly, the color and quality did not last. 
The hats are also quite heavy, coming in at about two to four kilograms or four and a half to nine pounds in weight. Surprisingly, the hats become even heavier when wet. Based on the incredible weight of these hats, the strap of the hat has always been fixed at the chin as opposed to below the jaw for fear that a guard's neck could be snapped if an attack were to forcefully slip the hat backwards. As barbaric as it may sound, bears are hunted and used to make these hats and while there have been efforts to use synthetic material in place of bear fur, the synthetic material simply did not do the job. Number five, there are very strict conditions to be met before joining their ranks. As would be expected of any security agency tasked with protecting one of the most famous, loved, and equally hated families in the world, there are strict qualifications for being a Queen's Guard. To be considered a suitable candidate to join the ranks of the Guard, you must be of British descent, and being of noble birth is also an added advantage, although not a prerequisite. Since the Queen's Guard is also a military organization, candidates must pass the British Army Recruit Battery Test, or VARB, to ensure their mental and physical fitness is above average. Another condition that simply cannot be avoided is that candidates must meet a certain height requirement. Just a few decades ago, only individuals who were at least six feet or the ideal 6'2 were considered suitable for the role. However, the rule's been changed to allow individuals to join the Queen's Guard if they're a minimum of 5'10". This change was enacted after many complaints arose from displeased civilians who wanted to serve their country by joining the Royal Infantry but failed the height test. Aspirants are also expected to pass a series of writing, health, and physical tests before they're accepted into this noble rank and paid based on a list of defined salaries by the British Army. Number six, sometimes a guard will speak or act. The Queen's Guard are not very well known for their oratory skills. Rather, silence, even in scenes of uproarious laughter, is the mark of a Queen's Guard. However, the guards are allowed to bark out orders and warnings at citizens and passers-by who interfere, bother, disrupt, or act offensively towards them, especially when citizens hinder them from performing their designated duties. Although the Queen's Guard has a limited range of vocabulary, the commands they're allowed to use are distinct and give a clear command to the intended individual. In cases where an individual gets in the way of their match, they're expected to shout in a clear, loud voice, Make way for the Queen's Guard. If anyone gets too close, they're to say, step away from the Queen's Guard. Further, if an individual were to touch them, they're permitted to step forward and yell, do not touch the Queen's Guard. These are some of the most heard orders issued by members of the Queen's Guard from time to time. Failure to comply with orders given by the Queen's Guard could result in retaliation or a show of force. Number seven, they definitely get bored. Unsurprisingly, standing motionless for six hours at a time with an occasional movement every 15 to 20 minutes is not a fun way to spend your day. This boredom could be a slow form of mental torture that can lead to officers snapping in frustration. This has led to many guards coming up with unique ways to entertain themselves. Some have admitted to singing songs in their head, recalling whole movies from start to finish, deliberately getting lost in thoughts, and quietly enjoying attempts made by people to make them laugh. Some are content with simply people watching the citizens around them. Their boredom is often so intense that they must undergo special training on how to keep their minds engaged during their long shifts. Six hours of doing nothing but standing doesn't just bore the body, but it also bores the mind. Although they likely won't offer you a thank you, I'm sure they may appreciate your efforts to keep them entertained. Number eight. They don't like being intimidated. Picture a random stranger making fun of you because of how you dress, look, walk, talk, and respond to your surroundings. Now imagine a random stranger making fun of something that took you countless sleepless nights and an incredible amount of time to master. It doesn't feel nice, does it? Well, this and more are what the members of the Queen's Guard face daily during their royal duties of protecting Buckingham Palace and St. James Palace in London. All sorts of individuals approach them each day, from good-natured comedians to rude, annoying, and outright violent pranksters who come in different ages, sizes, sexes, and races. Regardless of how much these people may piss them off, the guards often have no choice but to avert their focus and remain steadfast in performing their duties. Number nine, they're exposed to serious health risks. 
terrifying diseases and health problems like Ebola, COVID-19, malaria, and so on, ravage the world at large. Who would have thought that the simple act of standing still for hours could be so risky for the human body in the face of such diseases? Well, this is a risk the Queen's Guard constantly face amidst the potential of getting heat stroke from standing in the sun, their legs cramping due to poor circulation, and getting sick when standing out in the cold, rain, or snow. To combat the health risks they may face, guards are allowed to step out, turn left, walk 10 paces, and then return to their position every 10 to 15 minutes. This is mostly done to prevent their legs from cramping due to poor blood circulation and relaxation of muscles. Prolonged exposure to harsh weather is another health hazard they suffer. Dressed in thick clothing, both in the dreadfully hot weather or freezing cold, they must mount their posts as true soldiers of the crown. Number 10. They have a higher chance of talking to the queen than most people. Constantly being around trained military personnel in uniforms made of red tunics and black bearskin hats are bound to make anyone try to start a conversation with them. Although having a conversation with them may not be as exciting as you think. They all look alike from a distance and must respond to the queen with dictated formal speech in reverence of her majesty. Nonetheless, it does tend to happen now and then and one lucky guard admitted to having spoken to the queen as she approached him with her husband and their dogs to ask him some questions about himself. In his words, she's nice. It's been the case that occasionally the queen will randomly speak to a guard to know more about them, ask for directions, or simply boost morale. Number 11. There are five regiments. These regiments generally perform the same task, but are made up of recruits from different parts of Britain with specializations in unique, independent skills, which would be useful in an emergency. These five units are the Regiment of the Grenadier Guards, the Regiment of the Coldstream Guards, the Regiment of the Scots Guard, the Regiment of the Irish Guards, and the Regiment of the Welsh Guards. To the uninformed eye, these regiments look the same as they're not easily distinguished from another due to their matching uniforms. However, there are slight changes in the design of each uniform as follows. The Grenadier Guards have single buttons evenly spaced and a grenade on the collar badge with no plume on their hats. The Coldstream Guards have pairs of buttons with a plume on their hats. The Scots Guards are identified with buttons in threes, no plume on their cap, and a thistle on their collar badge. The Irish Guards are decorated with buttons in fours, a blue plume on their cap, and a shamrock on their collar badges. And the Welsh Guards have as many as buttons in fives, green plumes on caps, and leeks on their collar badges. Number 12. It takes a long time to become a member of the Queen's Guard. All members of the Queen's Guard are highly trained personnel in the British Army and undergo an extensive 30 weeks of training for fitness before being accepted into one of five regiments. The training includes composure, protocols, security, combat, and maintenance. Hence, it should not come as a surprise that the comic-looking Queen's Guard is comprised of extremely well-trained soldiers fit for an international war. Training like this takes time, and only the best are designated to defend Her Majesty. The strict nature of the training is one reason guards are reprimanded and punished for failing to comply with protocol, as their actions soil the guards' reputation. Number 13. They can only faint in a certain way. Standing still is no easy feat. It's not uncommon for guards to pass out on duty. Interestingly, there's a specific way in which they're permitted to faint. Falling either face flat or backwards is deemed a noble fall. Judging from the gruesome experience, this guard's face passing out does seem to be a welcome escape. Still, it must be done appropriately or else the unconscious soldier is frowned upon. This does not mean the order is made of inhumane leaders. It's quite the contrary, in fact. On especially hot days, waiters assigned to the guards are given the responsibility to tend to them and give them something cool to drink when it's hot or a warm drink when it's cold. Number 14. They're allowed to resort to violence under certain conditions. Members of the Queen's Guard are allowed to resort to violence by slapping, punching, shooting, restraining, or stabbing anyone they consider dangerous to the Queen or other royal persons. This is only permitted in cases where an individual is caught taking aggressive actions against the royal family. While not seen often, if an individual ignores their warnings, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of their assault. Number 15. No toilet breaks allowed. 
As mortifying as it sounds, the Queen's Guard may have to have a go while standing there as there are no toilet breaks allowed during work hours. This requires strict dietary discipline before their shifts begin, or else they risk embarrassing not just themselves, but the image of the royal family when the usual selfie-hunting passerby comes close for a picture only to perceive a foul stench. This action was surprisingly well accounted for, as the guards are given thick uniforms that absorb moisture, along with black pants that don't reveal stains. Some even go on to argue that this is why they don't like people getting close or touching them. From the late 1700s till date, there have been several attacks on the royal family, either due to political motives, a hunger for power, or mental illness. Most of these attacks were aimed at the monarch herself or his immediate successor. For instance, the anti-royalist attack on Prince Charles by one Katalyv Brakhanov in 1994 and the attempted murder of the same Prince Charles by gunshot at the hands of David Kang, which happened in the same year. The Queen herself has been subject to several attacks, both during meetings with public and in her personal time. With a stunning number of assassination attempts against the Queen, the British government needs to form new agencies and empower already existing security agencies dedicated to protecting the royal family.